Hey guys! Okay, so for those of you who saw my spaghetti squash post and asked how I did it and all that jazz, I decided to show you because I need to eat lunch and I was going to throw it together again and it's so super easy, I thought might as well do this live. So, just to start out, I already have my spaghetti squash. Okay, this is what it looks like, super easy. Basically, you take a spaghetti squash, okay? You cut it in half. You put it cut side down in a baking dish and put just enough water just to cover that top where you cut, okay? Then 350 for 40 minutes. I flipped it over, salt and pepper, and I did it for another five minutes. So once your spaghetti squash is cooked, you then take a fork and you kind of scrape it out and it looks like this. This is why they call it spaghetti squash because it literally looks like spaghetti strands, okay? It's so good, it's just a healthier alternative to pasta and I'm always trying, attempting to eat healthier because I could eat pasta every single day, just saying. So I actually did this same thing with pasta too. I, I just can't get enough. Basically onions, garlic, tomato, all my favorite, things so it's super easy so once you have your spaghetti squash cooked you set that aside okay you're going to take a can of chickpeas and open it strain it and then rinse it off okay unsalted by the way then you're going to get some tomatoes some grape tomatoes this is like a little medley different colors which just looks visually um, delicious and then the recipe that I saw called for spinach but I have kale so I'm going to substitute it also called for some feta cheese which I have here who doesn't love feta and a red onion some garlic and it did not include olives but I love salt so I like to add a little olive in there as well now I already have my pan heating up um, and I just found out because I just upgraded my uh, pots and pans to stainless steel. I just found out that it actually doesn't work well with high heat because, not that it doesn't work well, but it's, it's more care because um, the oil will start to discolor the pots and pans and then you have to use like a special cleaner and all this stuff. I don't know. I have to look into it further. But so I already have that going on. It's on a low heat. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil which olive oil you're not going to use it says two tablespoons by the way if you ever watch my videos i never actually measure things everything is by eye but feel free to measure so the recipe did call for two tablespoons of olive oil that seems about right to me so we'll work with that okay i'm gonna add two cloves of garlic by the way, once you have all the ingredients, it's super duper easy. Now, if you have minced garlic, if you buy the already minced, you can add that as well. I, I don't like to buy it already done. I actually like to do it. I feel like I put a little extra love in it when I'm doing it myself. But you're basically just taking all these ingredients and tossing them together. So it's so easy and it's so delicious, so delicious. So cutting off the ends of the garlic and then just giving it a quick cut, being careful not to chop your fingers off because I did cut myself with this knife the other day. This is a really good knife. I got this for Nick because he loves his knives and oh my gosh, it's so sharp. I could have taken my finger off completely, but thank God I didn't. Now, I've had this now for the last three days because that spaghetti squash, it really does give you a lot. So me and Nick ate this two nights ago for dinner and it was very filling because between the spaghetti squash and then the chickpeas, it really does fill you up. I did buy uh, veg veggie burgers just in case I was still hungry. Now, I am not a vegetarian by any sense of the word, but sometimes I just like to switch it up because I feel like you can only eat so much meat, you know? So sometimes I get sick of eating meat and just want to eat something 
healthy and meatless. Plus I'm trying to drop some LBs, you know what I mean? But don't get me wrong, I do love a delicious pork chop with an apple chutney or a nice red steak, medium rare please. So I'm just gonna do some thin slices of my red onion. It says a quarter cup of red onion. But again, I don't measure. You put in what you want. That's how I feel. I know a lot of people that are very specific in measuring or if, or if they buy like prepackaged um, chicken nuggets, they have, they set, an, they set their timer for the time and they put it on the exact temperature and they're totally confused if it is not what it says on the directions just that just cracks me up like to me you, I, I just eye everything I I I just throwing in my red onion now of course you could you could chop your onion in ahead of time. You could chop your garlic ahead of time. And then you just throw it all in when you're ready. Just gonna throw a little bit more in because frankly, I love me some onion. Love me some onion, oh yeah. Love me some garlic. Just give that a little shake. Get that ground up. In the meantime, I'm going to take my tomatoes and I'm going to slice them in half. So I made this same thing with linguine yesterday. Just trying to use up all my veggies and stuff before they go bad. And so I didn't even need a sauce. It was perfect without having to add a sauce. It has just enough flavor. It was absolutely delicious. And of course, you could use you can use any pasta. You can use a whole wheat pasta. You can use a bow tie if you wanted to. You know. Let me get this around. We do want to brown that up a bit. The key to cooking is cleaning up as you go, so you're not hit with a big mess when you're done. Let me put my onion away. I never put onion in the refrigerator, by the way. I read that somewhere. Something about how it soaks up the bacteria or something. I don't remember the deets, but look it up. They say never put an onion in the refrigerator. So I usually just throw it in a plastic bag. And if I don't use it in a day or two, I chuck it. So just making a little spaghetti squash lunch today. Something healthy, something fast. Not a whole lot of work. And I'm just cleaning up while my onions break down. By the way, how adorable is my little on my uh, garlic holder? It's ceramic. Isn't this just the cutest thing in the world? Looks like a little basket. I love that. I even have a bigger one, which is where I have all my lemons. So cute, right? So adorable. Okay, let's get this rocking and rolling here. Just breaking down that garlic, breaking down those onions. We're going to take some kale. Now with kale, you wanna make sure that you're cutting out 
the stem. It's not very uh, tasty and it can be a bit tough to chew into. So this would be the stem right here, this guy. You could just rip off the actual greens from that stem. Very easy. And if you have, if you buy the long ones, which I actually prefer, Nick bought the bag. Um, so it's like all chopped up like this, but I do like to buy it whole and then I just hold on to the stem and I literally like rip it right off. It slides right off. Very easy. Again, I'm kind of just eyeing how much I want in there. I'm just chopping it up a bit so I don't have ginormous pieces. Now this is one of those dishes, if your kids don't eat veggies, that you're not going to be able to trick them. I did attempt to give it to my kids, and as soon as they saw the green, they weren't going for it. And it kind of bums me out, because Hunter used to be my broccoli eater. We'd be out to dinner, and he would ask for a big bowl of broccoli. So that's what he would get, a big bowl of steamed broccoli, and he loved it. And if even if he wanted chicken or something, he usually wanted grilled chicken with broccoli. It was the craziest thing, but I, I was so proud. I was like, oh my gosh, my kid's gonna eat his veggies and this is amazing. Well, that was short-lived. Now he's all about chicken nuggets, french fries, and pizza, your basic kid foods. And it's like pulling teeth to get him to eat veggies now. So that's why I wanted the blender. If you guys watched previously, and that's why I wanted the blender for Christmas because now I can throw some spinach and stuff in his drinks and he loves it. He drinks his veggies now. So you gotta get it in them one way or the other. Just giving that a mix and we're gonna toss in the tomatoes. Here's my tomato medley. I'm gonna add my chickpeas. Again, I'm not measuring. I'm just kind of throwing it in. But it's so good, you guys. I cannot tell you how delicious this is. You really have to try it. Now I see Nancy popped on, and Nancy's husband is a chef. I went to his food truck one night and got a veggie burger. Oh my God, it was actually delicious, delicious. Oh, it was so good. I've yet to uh, make my own veggie burger from scratch. I usually get a brand called Hillary's from Whole Foods. You could probably find it at your local Trader Joe's or even Stop and Shop has an organic aisle. And um, oh my gosh, it's very tasty, but I would love to do it myself with some black beans. Mm -mm -mm. Doesn't this just look amazing? Like seriously, I wish we had a smell can so you can smell how incredible it is. So while that's going, I'm now going to add my spaghetti squash. Bum, bum, bum. You know what? I'm going to throw it all in there because when Nick gets home, I'm sure he's going to want some of this. And then just tossing it around in here. Super duper easy. Is this not so fast? So easy, simple ingredients, tasty. Maybe I should have used a bigger pan, another size up, but it's okay. We'll make it work. Make it work. Clean up while that just heats up a bit. You don't want to overcook the cow because then it'll start to wilt. And when you're putting your lettuce 
your greens away. I like to add it to a Ziploc bag like this, and then I take a paper towel, if I can get it off, and I throw some paper towel right in there because that's gonna soak up any liquid, so you'll actually be able to keep it a little bit longer. You can also freeze it, but I know I'll be eating this probably again tomorrow. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of crushed red pepper because I like things spicy. Can never have enough of that. And a little bit of Himalayan pink salt. Hey, Bobby. As you can see, I have my windows open, so some of it's flying. Hi, Bob. Sleepy head. You were sleeping. Okay, we're going pepperless because I can't find it. So we'll do another toss again. Yes, boo boo. What happened? What happened? Let me give a little taste. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm -mm. Delicious. So good. I'm get my bowl. Can't have enough olives. Do you guys know that this is like my favorite thing to eat, an olive? Mm. God, they're so good. I can eat this whole jar. Whole jar of olives. This is my... I just ate olive stands right here. <laughs> oh, I cracked myself up. Oh yeah. Hi, Bobby. You had a nice nap? Not long enough. That was a quick one. Yeah. That was a quick nap, my boy. That was a quick my boy. Okay, I'm just gonna put all of it into this bowl. Do, do. Get all that yummy goodness out of there. And then I'm gonna add my olives. Let me get a spoon. You could chop the olives up, but I'm gonna just throw them in whole because I have an olive obsession. Okay, some feta crumbles. And who doesn't love that? Bring on the cheese. A little toss. Look at this. Come on, really? Just looks so good. I'm telling you, it's delicious. Delicious. All my favorite things in here. Seriously, cheese, olives, tomato, kale. I know what you're thinking, kale was so 2014, but I'm telling you, it is so delish. You guys, let me let me pull you off. Hi, Bubba. You want a drink? <laughs> you guys are gonna love this stuff. Check it out. Ugh. Dun dun dun. -da! The finished product. I hope you guys try it, and let me know what you think. Send me a pic. Bye. Goodbye. Cooking with Cat is ending. Adios.